The Atari VCS is a console PC hybrid, but out of the box, it's basically a game console that can run a second operating system if you do the work. That means getting a copy of Windows or other operating systems and installing either an M2 drive into your VCS or using a fast USB solid state drive, which is what I'll be showing you how to do today. The process is pretty easy and free. There are also links below to the official instructions and downloads you'll need. At the end, if you like the video, give me a like as it really helps, and subscribe if you would like to see more. You will need a USB solid state drive capable of a fast data transfer speed. The faster the better. The VCS's USB ports are 3.1, so get a 3.1 SSD. I picked up a 500 gigabyte drive from Walmart for about $70. The one in this video is a Seagate OneTouch. The process starts with using Microsoft's Windows Media Creation Tool to download an image disk called an ISO of Windows 10 onto your computer. Launch the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool. Select Create Installation Media, then click Next. You'll be taken to a Select Language, Architecture, and Edition screen. You'll set your language, Windows 10 for the edition and 64-bit x64 for the architecture. Click Next. The next panel says choose which media to use. Select ISO file, click Next. At this point, the Windows 10 ISO will download to your computer. It can take a while. Click Finish when done. The next section gets the Windows 10 ISO onto your SSD. You'll need to download Windows USB for free on the Hesleo software website. Other options exist and might work, but your mileage will vary, and this program is in the official Atari guide, so it's what I'm using. Launch Windows USB. Click on the folder icon and select the Windows image file that you just downloaded from its download location on your computer. Select the edition you want to install. Probably you'll want Windows 10 Home, then click Next. Plug in your USB drive, then click on the drop down arrow and select the USB drive for your destination disk. A pop-up will appear. Select GPT for UEFI. You must select GPT for UEFI in order for everything to work. This has to do with the kind of partition structure that's used to store and boot windows. Click Yes. If you haven't formatted the USB drive yet, you'll be able to do so here. Otherwise, you'll move on to a screen showing two long blue bars and more. The only thing you need to know is that you must select VHD, or Virtual Hard Disk. Click Next and wait while the Windows ISO is written to your drive. Now, you're ready to plug the USB drive into your Atari VCS. Plug in the drive and turn on the power button on the VCS. The VCS will boot into Windows, at which point you'll go through the lengthy initial Windows installation and acceptance screen process. That's it! If you want to boot up the VCS into PC mode, you simply start the console with the USB drive plugged in. If you want to go into the Atari OS, unplug the drive and start up the console. There is an app called PC Mode which lets you quickly reboot the VCS as well. Because you've not paid the price for a Windows 10 license, this version of Windows 10 is considered unactivated, and you'll periodically see something to that effect from Microsoft. However, the full Windows experience is available long term, including downloading and playing games, streaming, and using Edge, which supports video output of up to 1080p. The only thing you can't do is a lot of desktop personalization with an unactivated license. The VCS's 4K shines in PC mode, and it works quite a bit better than in the Atari OS. Gaming and performance of the VCS in PC mode is best dealt with elsewhere and not in this video, but it's generally functional and a real option for daily use. Thanks for watching! I'll be making more videos as future games get released for the Atari OS, and I may do other videos like this one too when I feel like it. Have fun!